Declaration of the Independence is a treaty. So we have two treaties that we are protected by under treaty law. The Articles Confederation, they have never gone away. They're still here. All right. And the Declaration of Independence. Okay, Patrick. Now, I, I, Patrick, I made a mistake. I, I didn't start the recording, so I started it just a little bit of minutes minutes ago. Could you just summarize the status of the International Court again for the people on the recording? Okay. Uh, the International Court, it's uh, the United States Court of International Trade. It was set up in 18 or 1789 under the first session of Congress, right after they set up the Constitution. It's in the, the statutes? Charter. It's in the statutes? It's, it's in the statutes. In, wow. And basically, uh, you'll see that, and that is where Chapter 5 comes in, in the Volume 1 of the uh, Statutes at Large, First Session, Chapter 5. And that talks about uh, the forfeiture of ships, vessels. Okay. Back to the owner, Okay. And basically, there's 40 sections in there. You've got to read between the lines in what it's saying. We are the owners. Only the living can ever own anything. A corporation really can't own anything. They can try and take possession of something, but they can't own it. Okay. They've got to clear their books at the end of the year. Zero their books. Every corporation has to do that. So basically they can't own anything at the end of the year. It all goes back to the shareholders or the owners of those corporations. Hmm. The people need to look at what they're really talking about. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do a lot of talking and they don't know what they're really saying. They believe in a lot of stuff that people are putting out here, but <clears throat> have they ever really checked it out? A lot of people haven't. And, and it is, they don't make it easy for you to check out either. Well, no, it, it is easy in some regards. You just have to go and look in the dictionaries, and more than one dictionary, and then uh, get the true understanding of the words. Oh, hidden in plain sight type of thing. That's it. The remedy always has to be there. Interesting. Now, yeah. Now, I put a Rev 2 of the affidavit up there, and I put international and national in that document quite a bit. I addressed, and we are the international. The corporate state of, like in my case, Iowa, or the corporate United States, they are the national. Okay. okay. And then, basically, they came about in, uh, in this new system that they're operating with in 1871, when they brought the postal system into this country. The the usury money system, okay? In the old days, and in William Shakespeare movie, or play, uh, Merchant of Venice, it was called the Jew. The Jew is a monetary belief system of usury. The Christian in the movie, or the merchant, Christian was one who is operating in just monetary with no usury. Hmm. That's the difference between the Jew and the Christian in the Merchant of Venice. And then when you see, and I told people to get out there and watch that latest movie with Al Pacino in it as the Jew especially the trial, you will see that basically uh, 
just compensation is not offered. Payment is offered to the Jew twice. He refuses it, just like we've tried to do in court. Hmm. And uh, But they do not uh, give just compensation in return. Now, when you realize what is going on here, then you can turn the tables on them in the process. But until you wake up, and we were told to read this book back in school about, at least I know I was, back in uh, uh, middle school or uh, whatever, and uh, I just found it too boring. Hell, I love the damn thing now. In fact, all of Shakespeare's plays. Yes, I agree. Are very heavy into this. Even Julius Caesar. That's why they killed him. Because the monetary, the Jew money system, wanted to come in and take control. Caesar wanted just currency. Hmm. Yeah. You got to look at these things and then look at the Bible from the same aspect. Well, uh, the Shakespeare, I've I've talked with some people while the the, the uh, Friedrich Schiller, who's a philosopher and uh, also a historian, uh, has has a theory that the best best way to teach physics is to have plays which uh, go into history. And uh, you're re- you're really emphasizing that. And also, uh, since uh, Schiller and and Shakespeare were very very deep in uh, in the way they presented history, what what we're really seeing probably is a better representation of court practices than we get in any other form. Right. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, and see, the thing is. Those plays are documented. They're uh, the plays, the movies, the books. They're all documented in uh, uh, the congressional records or library. Now, if something is documented in the bad library, you can use that as a reference in any court case. No kidding. Yeah, it's Great. documented. It's Great. A documentary. Okay. Now, see, people have been going and they've been using all the wrong stuff in most of these damn court cases. They try and go and argue uh, codes. Codes Mm -hmm. are not for the international. Codes are for the national. You're not the national. Wow, this is a real new look on it, which is probably a very old book. Yeah, it's uh, basically you're either the Jew or the Christian. You're operating in the commercial monetary system of usury, or you're operating in the Christian monetary system of just exchange. Hmm. And when they violate uh, the law, just like in the movie Merchant of Venice there, uh, the Jew was uh, asked twice by the person, uh, as the person of law, uh, have you got something to bind the wound when you cut the flesh away? Oh, no, that's not written in my bond. Well, see, that's compensation. You have to compensate for what you're taking away. And he was not going to offer the compensation. And then basically, in the end, it was down to, well, you cannot cause one drop of Christian blood to be spilt. Well, there's no way in hell he could cut on a living individual without causing a drop of blood. And see, that's what they've been doing with us. And the scam of it is they're using the postal system out here. By making you a banker. You are a banker by the zip code and then dash the four digits that it's assigned to you. Check your mail. 
if you have a bill from a utility come near from the IRS that has the zip code dash four digits, that is your bank routing number to your back pocket bank. You are a private banker. Okay, you're also a postmaster. That is also a PMB number. Okay. Postmaster banker number. Okay. Now, we found out that basically as soon as you do get your uh, SS uh your EIN for your estate, you take your Social Security and turn it into an estate, and then you do your Form 56 and Form 56F, okay, and then you'll go and get your foreign grantor EIN number, do your Form 56 and 56F. You now are the authorized representative for that account. You're also the authorized banking representative for that uh, EIN transmitting utility number. And this will come into play in the uh, International Bill of Exchange because you're going to be signing both as the banker and as the drawer. Hmm. The drawer will be the Form 56. The banker will be the R Form 56F. We send our international bill of exchange into uh, the Department of the Treasury, either at the United States uh, 20220 or at your state capital with an AL not OL, because the state capital is the holder of the state treasury department. The secretary of the treasury, or the secretary of the state for that capital is the postmaster of that capital. The postmaster at uh, the Treasury Department in Washington, D.C., I think, is the Deputy Secretary of the Treasury. Hmm. Okay. Not the Secretary of the Treasury, because the Secretary of the Treasury is called out to have different responsibilities in uh, the uh, setting up of the Treasury Department, not the Department of the Treasury, but the Treasury Department, which was outlined in the statutes at large, first session there, uh, in 1789. Okay, you make me want to sit down and read all of Volume 1. <laughs> well, it's pretty thick. Uh, the best thing that I've found to do in a lot of these going into the statutes of large is when you're looking for something, do a word search in the PDF. Let your fingers do the walking for you. Okay. Now, all the statutes are online, too. Yeah, I've got the link on the group site there. Okay. You go in and get all the statutes. Now, here's a kicker. The United States Postal Corporation, okay, took that Chapter 5 and plagiarized it for their own benefit. They plagiarized that into USC code Title 46. 
And at the very end, uh, when you get into Title 46, I think it's back about 1,300 or something like that, 1,200 or something uh, different sections, but they've hidden it way at the very end. This is where they try and get you to forfeit the house, whatever, the payment out of your back pocket, over to them. When per chapter 5, it's supposed to be the other way around. They're supposed to be forfeiting it to us mm -hmm. as the owner. Yep. Hey, by chapter 5, you mean section 5 of Title 46? No. Chapter 5 of the first session of, uh, in Volume 1. Oh, okay. Okay. Of the statutes at large. Okay. That's what they plagiarized and put into the back of Title 46. Okay. They okay. took a lot of things out of the real laws and stuck them into that Title 46 under shipping to create the vessels, financial vessels, that they're operating with. And it's all under false registry because they've registered our names in appropriately To claim an inheritance, you always go to the family lineage first, then to the individual. Hmm. Okay. There's the rationale as yeah, some men in black want to talk to you about last family name first. That's that's really the way you want to talk to them about it. Yeah, it's because uh, the family always comes first, and basically, it's uh, in international inheritance. You have to know what family you're addressing. Why need? Okay. Now, we found this out, and basically then I also put up on the group site, so if you've got your uh, EIN for your estate, you've got your EIN for your foreign grant or trust, you've got your Form 56s done and 56S, you should also have a UCC-1 either addressing the estate or the trust that what you have claimed. Now you turn around and you can go and do an international uh, bill of exchange knowing that you are the international and you're putting it a claim into the national bank. So you're coming in outside their world. So you're an international. Okay. And I put the example up there of those. Uh, you might want to talk that over uh, if you run into some questions on it. But try and think it through. We, I had this up about four years ago in 2010. Wow. When I was working with a guy by the name of David Clarence and Tim out of Illinois. Okay? We tried to go to the DTC with us. Okay? Now, so, David Clarence and Tim, are they're working with uh, uh, James Madison. They'll be on a talk show tomorrow night on James Madison. You can go and listen to them and see what do you think. They really are close to what I'm talking about at all. I think you'll find that they're not close whatsoever. But that's up to you. I'm not trying to influence you one way or the other. I'm just trying to put the truth out there the way I see it. Now it's up to you to make up your mind what you want to believe. Yes, but I, I like to add that idea, Patrick. It's always good to make comparisons to see, exactly. to see what's going on. It's 
Good idea. Someone else had a question there? Well, that's, uh, I think someone was, was agreeing. But uh, one of the questions that came up during the week uh, was uh, these postmasters that you're talking about, uh, are, are they the, the Secretary of the Treasury? And I think you've just cleared that up and that, in that it's uh, the postmaster is either the Secretary of State or the Department of the Treasury. Well, for the state. Deputy, deputy of okay. the Treasury. For the state, it's the Secretary of the State. Okay. Okay. That's the chief registrar for the state. So basically, that Secretary of State is wearing a dual hat, both as Secretary of State and Postmaster of the Postal Treasury Department, Capital Treasury Department. Okay. Now... At the federal level, Hillary Clinton, or who's ever in uh, the Secretary of State right now, is off in a different location entirely, different zip codes. So basically, she can't be the postmaster of the Treasury at 20220. And it can't be the Secretary of State. John okay. Took okay, I took the okay. notes wrong then. It's the Secretary of State at the state level, but the Deputy Treasurer at the uh, federal level. That's out of the, of the Department of the Treasury. Right. The Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, I think, is, when I went through and was looking at the logic of it, okay, and when you read the setup of the uh, Treasury Department in that volume one, and I posted that up on the group. It's in one of, I think, the second folder. I know I've had that out there for several months now. Yes. The setup of the Department of the, or the Treasury Department, not the Department of the Treasury, because the Treasury Department was set up in 1789. The Department of the Treasury was set up in 1860. Huh. Now, see, that's a fraudulent one. That's the the usury money treasury. And then they brought about in 1920, uh, they set up two funds, a trust fund and a special fund. So they're held within that Department of the Treasury there. The Social Security account number was attached to the trust fund. Our certificate of live birth and uh, other items were attached to uh, our corporate shares of the stock were attached to the special fund account. Now, when you get your foreign granter trust, EIN, that is laid claim to that uh, special fund account. When you do your EIN for the estate, okay, that laid claim to the trust fund. Okay. Okay. So now you have laid claim to both of those two funds that were held in the Department of the Treasury. Now you have to come in and start moving the assets out. You now have your Form 56s. All you need to do now is to do an international bill of exchange. But you have to be an international using your name as an international. Not as a national. Okay. I hope I made some sense out of this. Yeah, it you makes have. sense. I, I've you got to. Yeah, we've got. I've got to go read it and, and see it in the documents now and make sure I understand it clearly. But thank you. Uh, a person asked about a 1041B. Uh, 
Now they they are are you using that at all still? Do you have well, the only no, one I saw no, on the website no, is we don't. We as an international do not use any forms. Okay. Even when we go to this uh, United States Court of International Trade, they have a whole bunch of forms. You go into their site, you can download all their forms, all their rules. Look them all over. They're all covered by codes. The codes do not apply to us. The fees do not apply to us. You have to go back to the first volume of the statutes at large and go into that first session. And you'll find in there, under the judicial setup, in that basically if an American has to come in the court, he can submit paperwork in any form, and the court has to take it and respond to it. Hmm. No form whatsoever. Chicken scratching will work if they can logically interpret it. See, people, you want to go in, you want to play in their sandbox? Uh Uh-uh. I want them to come out of that sandbox and play in my sandbox where I'm in charge. So we should really learn not only the Treasury Act in there, but the Act setting up the courts. The setting up of basically, uh, especially the interfacing rules and regulations. And see, we do not fall under any of those codes. Okay? Now, one of the guys... Uh, Tim, okay, over there with David Clarence, on the, and I was listening to uh, one of his deals. He was talking about uh, Skull and Bones. said, you know what their secret number is? It's 322. Yes, I've heard that before. It said, go into Article 3, Section 2, Clause Two, huh. and that's where you'll find what they have. Well, what it says there is that basically the Supreme Court does not have jurisdiction over uh, regulations. Wow. Now, what do you have out here? You've got the Federal codes of regulation, or federal reg- codes, yeah, federal codes of regulation, or whatever. Right. CFRs, and then basically from them, a lot of the uh, U.S. codes come down, and then from them, the state codes come down. So see, that's what the secret societies are operating under is that uh, exemption of the regulations. I don't know whether Tim actually looked at it from that aspect or not. Uh, You can go back to, I think, the last uh, James Madison show and listen to uh, what they have to say if you want to listen to half of the other talk that they're setting up a, a seminar for about $500 and uh, they're going to show you how to get out of the system. Yep, yep. Uh-huh. Mm. That is your prerogative. If you don't like the word Yahweh, stay away from it because they use it all the time. Hmm. And they don't even understand what it really means. Yahweh means you. It's always meant you. Interesting. Yeah, you've got to have the faith and belief. 
and everybody has a different knowledge of faith and belief. So everybody has a different God because that's what a faith and belief establishes is the God for your grounds of dominion. Okay, I've done enough talking. You guys start asking questions and I'll shut up. Yeah, and did Patrick raise like a lot of questions? Uh, you got some questions, guys? I guess uh, they've got to go do their homework. I uh, got Patrick? Patrick? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. All right, this is Larry. Uh, I had a question on the registered mail. Um, with the registered mail, should we not be using that on all of the forms that we send in? No. Okay, when we send in a uh, bill of exchange, okay, and see, uh, we send this international bill of exchange in. We're going to put it under a certified mailing. Okay, it's got to be certified. So we're sending it in certified. Right. Okay, we'll use the certified mail number on there. Okay. Right. Then it goes to the postmaster or to the registrar from there in the Treasury Department. It goes to the auditor. From the auditor, it goes to the controller. And then it goes to the treasurer to issue the warrants. We've had a couple guys get uh, visited uh, because we were trying to do some warrants about two years ago or so. We can't do warrants either. It's the tre only the treasurer who can issue a warrant. So the, uh, these courts are issuing warrants. They better be a damn treasurer. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, I was I was thinking, you know, like on the forms that we send, not forms, but our documents that we send in, like the executive order claims a claim of false registry. On those, <clears throat> can we send those registered? Well, I don't see why you need to register them. Okay. All right. You turn around. Now, is what I did. I took a registered mail label, and I put a three cent stamp on my affidavit. Right. I put the. I cut the very top of it off to where it talks about the postal uh, stuff. Uh, the very top line, not this next line down. Registered mail. I left that on there. I cut that off, and then I. Uh, stuck that onto uh, that affidavit. I put okay. my three cent stamp on there. I uh, then I'm the postmaster, so I can cancel that right on the spot. I'm I made delivery right back to myself. I'm the mailer, and I'm the postmaster, and I delivered right back to the recipient. So I signed. Uh, and dated that stamp, and then I embossed it. Okay, All right. signed, and then so you keep the original. Now you can send a copy of that in, along with especially to your Secretary of State. Uh, if, if you do the new one with the international on there. Mm -hmm. uh, you would send that in there, and then basically you're establishing the fact that you are uh, not one of their national citizens. Okay, and that's yeah. that's why if you're going to make a copy of the embossed thing, you need to get an ink pad that you could uh, rub over the embossing so it shows up on the copy. Yeah, either uh, carbon paper or a uh, thumper or something like that. There's a thing they call a thumper that uh, you just sort of circle that you set over your seal and then you just sort of lightly tap it 
and right. it will uh, just highlight the raised areas. Now cool. I put a new uh, uh, embosser uh, item up there. Uh, one of the guys out in California. Okay, uh, I got it up there, and uh, with his new uh, layout of with the names that we have putting our names in the right place this time and coming in as the executive. Okay. So if you want to go get that or if you just if you've already got uh one from him, you can uh, uh even just try and get uh the new plate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. They can make up the plate and basically there's uh a couple days or so and basically you could probably get it out to you. Okay, you had said before it really didn't matter what it was on the bosser, but I guess you're saying now it really does help yeah, that. Well, you right don't thing. need, no, down the road, okay? Okay. You don't need it. If you've got one right now, just use what you've got. Okay. Okay, let's get the hell, get some money out of these guys and start, get, start I getting. I know that's right. Yeah, start getting uh, something uh, out here so we can try and help some of these other people that have been putting a lot of effort into this thing. Okay. Yes, I, I, I really am looking forward to the where the system works so we can help people. Exactly. Any more questions? Patrick, I, I think I may have some questions, but I really want to go study the new material you put out there and go reread those sections and re-listen to the Merchant of Venice, get that straight in my head, and then come up with the questions. Well, yeah, I strongly recommend that everybody try and get a copy of that uh, latest one with Al Pacino. That was probably the best, uh, and I seen a couple of the different uh, versions. Uh, there was a 1974 version of the uh, Jim Venice, but basically that one uh, doesn't... It, it has some of the stuff in it, but basically it just doesn't drive it home as well as this movie did. Okay. Last. And all the actors, I mean, even they... Most of them don't even understand what the play was all about. Interesting. I think that's rather typical of actors, though. Yeah, until sort of like Wesley Snipes, until basically uh, it turns around and starts biting you in the butt, and then, uh, oh, now I can see what the hell... Uh, that damn movie might have been trying to tell me. <laughs> True. Yeah, it would be a clue to get him out. Yeah, all these vampire movies that he did. He was touching on some of this stuff, but basically yeah. he didn't see what was really going on. Be very damn cautious when you do come out about ever getting back into using usury or interest rates or having insurance policies or mortgages. You pay as you go. You want to do that other stuff? Stay right where you are because you'll be right back there in probably a worse condition. Yeah, I, I liked your comment uh, on the last call where you said that uh, if anybody gets into a contract, you're going to go out and kill them. Well, they'll, they'll more than likely kill themselves first. Yeah, that's true. But I, I mean, that's a bit extreme. But I really, un I appreciate the sentiment behind it. Once, once it is start working. I, I, I think it would be good to have some discussions with you on, uh, on ex exactly what to do and not to do with these funds. I 
think it would be very helpful. Well, I think basically I try to lay out what to do right now. <laughs> right, right. And what not to do, okay? And right. not to do basically is common sense. Right, but uh, uh, like I would like to, like to uh, acquire another property, what's the proper way of doing that? Just giving you go them out that. and buy it. Okay, with with the uh, actual cash or equivalent from from the account that we now control. With your real assets. Right. You do a barter. You take what assets you have and exchange them with somebody else. Okay. Okay. See, one of the key things here is the post office is the de jure bank of the people of America. It always has been. Okay. What does the post office have in there? Depository. I mean, well, well, they have stamps. Stamps. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's the difference between a stamp and a dollar bill? Not much. No. You can use both of them as exchangement. That's true. Yeah, they both have the same value. A dollar is a dollar stamp is a dollar bill. Who prints these up? The U.S. Mint prints okay. both the stamps. And the dollar bills. I didn't know that the mint printed the stamps. Patrick, I have a question. Yeah. I have heard that a postal and that's a money order is real money. Is that so? Yes. Yeah, I cut yeah. That's what I heard a long, a long time ago. Yeah. And see that's where uh and what I'm doing, I try I was hoping to get it out in the mail today, but I I'm uh -huh. going to have to put it in the mail in the morning, but I'm sending in uh, for my uh, uh, $10 million to be drawn out of my uh, foreign granter trust out of the Treasury Department. Okay. Have them turn around and send it to my local post office uh -huh. to put it in, on deposit. Yeah. In okay. a depository account. Uh -huh. I can draw against that, okay? It's not going to come in as $10 million no. uh, in dollar bills or anything like that. But basically, right, it can right. come in. in yeah, it can come yeah. in in the credit and then uh -huh. basically against my uh, nine digit routing number, I can come okay. into that post office and uh, turn around and do a draw against that at, uh, say, uh, I think you can only do uh, 10 uh, $1,000 money orders a day. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Pat. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is Dan in uh, Iowa here. I talked to yeah. you today. Drew, at some meeting a few months ago, made mention that that U.S. Postal money order had been changed. And I don't remember any details. It's been too long ago, but it was like it it's not lawful money, and it had to do with something if it's used in the States or used outside of the country. But that could have changed in the last year. Well, Just to let you know, I can't remember any of the details. Yeah, basically, see, they're using the postal side of uh those items, but when you come in and you have your assets in a real value, you're coming in from the post office. You're not coming in from the postal office. So you'll have a postal or a post money order. Well, he just talked about some money order and it just changed. That's all I know. Yeah. I <laughs> I just don't remember anybody else ever talking about two different types of money orders. We're all talking yeah. about 
Why don't you go down to the post office and buy? Yeah, basically, I mean, half these banks don't know the difference between the two of them. But basically, uh, what you're putting into the systems uh, will make a difference, okay? Because they can't... Uh, you're taking out real assets and you're putting it into the system. This is what I'm trying to get at. And how they how they monitor that, I don't know, but it will be by the internal internal revenue service. Does the USPS have some functions that it does for the Desire Post Office? No. Uh, not so, here. So we have to go go to the uh, the uh, the the postmaster in in Washington D.C. for that, right? No. Where are you going to go to uh, uh, the international postmaster? Oh, international. Okay. okay. Uh, the, uh, postmaster of America. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that other guy that's in Washington, D.C., I don't know whether he's a real uh, deal or not, or he's just a postal master. Okay, so i I got to catch up to this new, with your new stuff here. Yeah, but we don't need to worry about some of that stuff. We will find out more as we go, but we need to get on the road and get in there to get some of our exactly. assets out and exactly. start realizing who we are. Right. Exactly. So that we stand as we the people. Okay. Even more work for us to do, but puts us in a good direction. Exactly, Tom. You're right. Any more I'll see questions? if I can find that uh, page out of the court uh, document there, but the others are up there. The Department of the Treasury, or the Treasury Department, and uh, that Chapter 5. I cut both of those out and put those up on the uh, group site there somewhere in the files. Right, and uh, I like the annotations that you made in there, too, because it's not just the statutes, but you're you're kind of reading between the lines stuff for us. Mm-hmm, exactly. Well, thank you very much, Patrick. This has been yes, very, very Patrick. interesting. Yes. Any other questions out there? Come on, guys. There's got to be something. Well, I may have questions, but you you filled me up with purpose right now, and I want to go study the documents again closely. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> okay, well, when you get that back, uh, the uh, audio there, I'll uh, try and uh, convert that again. Well, you, and, uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a whack. You, you sent me the URL for that. And I'll okay. go, go see if I can do it. And if I have problems with it, I may ask or I may just give it to you. But still ask I so I can it down do it. just about as much as I can on there when I do uh, make those audios. Okay. So it, uh, so I'll give it a try. Patrick. Okay. I have a question. Huh? Yeah. This is Queen Akaya from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You, I, remember you were saying so much you were going to put up another um, format of the, U, uh, the, UC, the UCC? Did you do that? Or did you, uh, did you do that? I, I don't think I ever did post that other one up, but I okay. uh, think I had one up there for the estate and one up for the trust there before. Uh, uh-huh. When you do this, just make mm-hmm. sure that it's a secured party. You put your name down in the right format. Okay. Okay. Can okay, you okay. repost that thing? Because I don't. Well, probably have, probably have to repost it. So, so you did one for the. You said you did one for the secure party. I mean, one for the estate and one for the what? Yeah, you can either do it for the estate or, uh, as long as you got one of them in there, okay. uh, the estate or the trust. Uh, try okay. and go with that. Okay. Okay. But can you then, post that again? Well, I think it's up there either in the first or second folder. 
Okay. Uh, I'll check tomorrow or something. Okay. To, uh, you you did. I think you did post a revision sometime in the past week. Oh, you well, did. I see it. I, if I was, yeah. It, uh, yeah, it might have been uh, a couple a month ago or so. Okay. Oh, I did right. anything see it up that. there. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I download all the files as they come and, and put them in, in the equivalent directory system so that I, I can use the Windows search function to find things. It's much uh -huh. easier than trying to find things on the Yahoo site. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, all this stuff, basically, we were so close uh, four years ago. Uh -huh. And... Uh, uh, now I can see, and see, one of the stories that I uh, referenced uh, in 2009 when I was talking to, uh, uh, on a talk show uh, that uh, mm -hmm. this guy Tim and I were doing, I was telling a story about, that I'd heard about this guy, I think this was the one, there was the one in Texas, but this one was about a young man going into uh, the Secretary of State's office out in Denver or Colorado. Okay. And being able to get access to his funds. Well, see, that makes all the sense if we go into the Secretary of State with our international bill of exchange as an international that we would get and he's the postmaster, he has to post it into the treasury because he is the registrar of the treasury department. He's the starting point. I had heard a story I had heard a story that someone in Michigan who needed a serious operation, I had a friend who knew the person, uh, went to the hospital with his birth certificate. And the hospital used his birth certificate and not only paid for the operation, which he couldn't otherwise afford, but put him up in a very expensive penthouse and gave him anything he wanted plus some cash yeah. back. Yeah. Because they were able to utilize that. They they could turn around and write uh, the charge off to the state. Yeah. Right. To the state treasury. Yes. And in fact, I, I I plan sometime in the next week because I'd I'd like to get some dental work done. Is going down to the, the a, a Creighton here, which has a dental school connected with the hospital, and see if I can get them to do it that way. Just try it out. Well, you can try it. <laughs> that I would get that international bill of exchange in okay. and maybe try and get some of that going. Okay. Yes. I, I have a question, Patrick. Yeah. I have a question. I know people have been talking about this black card and all this stuff, you know, a couple of last year, a couple of years ago and all this, and people talking about some of them got this card. And, and me, and with, and with the information you just gave us about this international bill of exchange and how we, um, but not seeing on it with the example you put up and with your example and, and the, the in the credit, which is, you have to put a credit of, uh, of 10 million. I say, well, hell, maybe that's where the black card can be put in the black card. And you use that black card. They're going to put, you know what I mean? That's what I'm thinking for with that. But people are talking about the black card. Have you ever heard of that? The black card? Oh, yeah, but uh, most of the black cards that were coming out were coming out from the Federal Reserve or uh, oh, from that okay. side, from the dark side. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, I would uh, uh, be more inclined to accept the green card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that's right, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, I want I want the money. <laughs> and and right. you you could get the international bill of exchange deposited into your green card. Well, that's what I don't know. I'm okay, try and find out. Try okay? and find out. Okay. There's there's several things that basically can start. Uh, once you broaden out in your understanding of what capabilities you have now as an international, that uh, you keep it in the honest monetary system. You yeah. don't play any of these damn, uh, well, if you want to go to Vegas and uh, have a mm. fling, go ahead. But basically, 
uh, what stays, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Okay, <laughs> the old saying. Okay. Uh, now, uh, stay away from all other usury, all other interest, all insurance policies. Okay. You got enough assets. You don't need to have insurance. Exactly. And you're not under statutory laws, so you don't need to have your insurance. And basically, we might end up getting, uh, you'll get different uh, passport and uh, a probably a different ID card exempting you from everything. Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So we can travel. Because yeah. are yeah. we going to have to get rid of our old passport? Yeah, and I think just as soon as you probably do this the first time with that Secretary of State and put that in, basically something's going to happen right then and there. You're going to be out of the system because you just proved to them you know what the hell's going on. Exactly. Great. Any more questions? Patrick. I have a question. Hello? You said you... Hello? One, one at a time. You, you said there's no stupid questions, but this uh, this is for co- like trying to come out and you haven't really, uh, you're still assimilating it, and uh, but your registration for the car has come up. Could, would it, could I just ask how you would, uh, from a sort of beginner's point of view, and well, that and the insurance. Do you, have your, do you have your estate EIN yet? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, basically, I would turn around, and there, uh, they sent the, the bill to you. I would turn around and send it up to them. Okay? That is a responsibility, and you uh, would try and address that to uh, the Secretary of the State, uh, that this bill is an obligation of the state treasury to okay. make the payment. Okay. Okay. You, you want your you want your just compensation. Okay. Okay. You're not going to pay the bill. You're if you're you're refusing. And see what they do. They have set up this postal entity, dead entity out here, commercial U.S. citizen or state of Iowa citizen, as a postal employee. Hmm. Now, as a postal employee, he's essentially dead because postal ends in A.L., after life. Right. So he's dead. Well, they can only operate with him if he appears to be alive. Right. You you have to give him life. So if you're paying for it out of your back pocket, you're giving him life. So right. When you come in as the executor uh, or the lawful individual, and that's why you need to try and start getting into getting these EINs, uh, for the estate and for the trust and the Form 56s and everything out here, and uh, you can't sit on a fence any longer. You need to start moving. Okay. okay so, so you need to do those first. You need to do those first is what you're you saying. You need to start working on them, but you can turn around and submit that up to them and say, no, uh, you sent this to the wrong bank. This is really an obligation of... Uh, the Treasury State Capital Bank under their zip code dash nine 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 eight. Their PMB okay. number. You can o- you can only do that after you've done the no, EIN. You can right. do this right now. You need the state okay. EIN at least. Yeah. And that, uh-huh. that no, was... you don't need to have the EIN. Oh, no kidding. Okay. No. Just send it in. 
say, mm-hmm. I refuse to give my consent for the payment of this. This is an obligation. You're using my vehicle. Okay? They're using, they're writing bonds against that vehicle. Okay? So basically, whose obligation is it to pay the license? Oh. It's theirs. Not yours. Okay. They're getting the benefit out of it, the vast majority of it. And that's what I told the Secretary of State, uh, the Treasurer, or the Attorney General's office about three years ago. I was sitting there. They said, I got this tax bill. I want this thing settled. Well, we can't do that. Well, I said, I ain't paying the damn thing until I get payment from it to make, make the payment. So you can either settle it or basically whatever. But I ain't doing shit with it. Huh. And I haven't done shit with it for over three years. I kept trying to send it back to him. said, here, yeah, this is your obligation, not mine. Yeah. Because if you do, you're you're really acting like a, an executor uh, days on tort. You know, um, instead of them them doing it, you you're right. Yeah. yeah. You're just hanging around in the cemetery too damn long. <laughs> yeah. You need to get out there and enjoy life. <laughs> let the dead, let the dead bury the dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the dead employees. They're supposed to take care of the dead. I mean, how many of these things have we heard over and over again? Well, the Secretary of State's wearing two hats. Oh, now I can see how the Secretary of State's wearing two hats. Basically, at the state level, one is as a postmaster. The other hat is Secretary of State. Mm-hmm. Now it fits. They just have to keep beating the bush until basically you get the rabbit to come out. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Yeah. Hey, Roger, this is Tracy. I have a question to ask. Um, I know that you were telling us that me and I, well, one of my friends that we kind of talked to you before about this, and, and he has he keeps saying as far as in when we send this, send our things back to them saying that they are supposed to make the payment. Well, they I mean, well they open up your mail because you know my friend Louis he keeps saying that that's a post, so they're not supposed to open up that you know other people's mail. Now, what was that again? I, yeah, I don't understand the question. Your, when you're sending back your mail, I mean, like, if you're, like, when you're changing your address and, you know, you're saying that you're not supposed to be paying the bill, isn't that, you know, are they allowed to open up another person's mail? Ooh. You're sending the bill back? Yeah, if you're, if you're not paying your bill, if you're telling them that they, they're supposed to pay your bill. Well, you're not going to... You've got to send the bills back. You've got three days to reject that. See, they're treating you as a bank. You have three days as a bank to reject that bill. See, you're operating under banking law now when they send you a bill. Right, but are we sending it back to the people that to the company or the corporation that send it to us, or we're sending it to the tra- You can the, do the it company. either way. You can forward it up to the Treasury Department or send it back to the utility company. But one thing you ought to do right now is uh, contact all your utility companies or uh, places that are sending you the bills, like clerk of the courts, whatever, and say the correct address for this national Patrick Divine really is the bank that you need to, you want to charge to, is up the state capitol. It's not my back pocket, it's up there. 
Now, you send all future mailings up there, and you file a 3575 form with the post office. Now, if they do not comply, there is a postal uh, place, and I think I posted a letter that I got back from the post office yeah, up did. on the site. Yeah, you did. Okay. okay. And basically the address is there to contact uh, that uh, computerized uh, the change of address security division up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So you can contact them directly. Hmm. So basically when we forwarded it back to them, we're stating that, you know, you're not the right the bank. Well, yeah, you're just not the bank that's going to pay this bill. Okay, and then one more other question. I noticed when, you know, I've, got, I've done my um, SS4 for my for my um, estate and my foreign grant for a trust, and now I'm in the process of doing the corrections on the form. Right. Now I see that you have an example for the SS4 for the estate, and... You, I was wondering with the trust, I'm reading over it and I'm making the corrections. And um, I noticed that you were saying I need to go to the Capitol Postmaster that's in Philadelphia. Um, well, not necessarily Philadelphia. Supposedly we found out that the uh, international, IRS international uh, office has moved out of Philadelphia and it's moving to Cincinnati. Oh, wow. Get out of here. Hmm. Yeah, there's something massive getting ready to take place on the East Coast. Wow. They're moving, they moving Cincinnati. They're moving from Philadelphia. IRS, they moving Cincinnati now. Cincinnati, Ohio, they moving from Philly now. Wow. So basically, we're about to have to, okay, so basically we need to wait on that foreign grant tour. I mean, well, where we need to send the correction up for that. Yeah, supposedly this was starting to take place. Uh, back in March, well, I sent something out to them last Monday. Uh, mm-hmm. They got a fax in, and one of the other ladies uh, sent a fax in to them, too. It was received there at the number that we had, but uh, the next day we tried it, and basically it's been disconnected. Hmm. Yeah, the one for Cincinnati or the one for Philadelphia? The one for Philadelphia. So that yeah. number that I have up there... And that one document for Philadelphia, don't use it. It won't work. Well, the one, it's one, they have one main, they have one main fax number. It's all the numbers except for the last four. The last four ones is 1040. That's a main fax number, the one in Philadelphia. Yeah, but I think even that's been shut down. I think we have to go to a fax number in Cincinnati. Okay. And, yeah. So the one in Cincinnati is the international accounts now? Yeah, that's where, yeah, yeah, supposedly it's located in Cincinnati, so uh, we'll get that that posted up on the group there. Okay. That's why we were sending all the corrections to the fax. That's why we were faxing our corrections into the Philadelphia, so now we have to put a hold on it, right? Yeah, or just send them into Cincinnati. I think there was a fax number for Cincinnati there before for doing the SS4s. Okay. Patrick, can I ask a quick question about state AIN? Yeah. The, uh, uh, someone uh, gave us the table, and I posted it up on the website. And, and I'm looking at it, and there's two columns on there that uh, I'm, I'm wondering about. The first, the first column, it says oddity name, and then it says state of Alabama, state of Alaska, but there's also the one that's very interesting to me is New Mexico. It's not the state of New Mexico. It's uh, New Mexico State Highway and Transportation Department. And uh, oh, it, it what seems, was this for? Uh, you know, someone someone the sent uh, all the state's EIN numbers, and I posted that up on the website. Yeah, the state EIN numbers. I guess it was Minister George yeah, I know he George 
Well, there's a whole bunch of EINs out here, okay? Okay. Uh, in different places, okay? Uh, don't think that that's the all-encompassing uh, list. Okay. Because this has yeah. the two columns. And basically, uh, why do you need it anyway, okay? Why do you need their EINs? Well, I have that same question that somebody responded for um, doing an atonement. atonement. Well, for revenge or whatever, okay? That's not the only reason you'd want to do that. And uh, we're beyond that. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, see, that's the whole Okay. We credit. They get the debt, they get the credit. Whoever the hell is the debt is the credit of the debt. They can't pay the debt because they got the credit forever, but they got an obligation. To make sure that these obligations. Now, we just force the United States Treasury Department. You got something to do right here, You're very soft out there. I can't really hear you. Yeah. You need to speak up or turn up your volume, volume or something. Oh, I was saying, um, I was just, I was doing a little math. This is Coleman, Coleman, um, Coleman from Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I've been following you for a minute, Patrick, with one of my other brothers, Mike Hill. There's more. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I just been, I just basically been getting the knowledge from all over, and uh, no one hitting up on this stuff that you're hitting on. So I was saying, oh, you said, she, she mentioned the entombment. And I said, okay, the entombment, as far as more of the IEN number, what you just mentioned, you said, we're not doing that for revenge no more. I said, okay, that's why we're not going to do the 1099s up on the uh, business anymore with the EIN number. Because we're we're going to be, we're, we're, we, we created the debt because we're the creditors. And like you said, we're going to pass it up to the um, United States Treasury because they have an obligation to discharge all of that. Right. Correct? Yeah, they they're the ones that owe the debt to us, okay. And when we uh, claim the debt and settle the thing, then basically the debt comes off the books that they are holding. Oh, balance okay. adjustment. That's what we're doing. We're balancing the account now. Yeah. And we're yeah. we're helping the damn country, whether they fully realize it or not. That's true because yeah. when when we do that, it comes off the national debt, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, that but see, these guys, these guys are on the other side of the fence, looking back and say, "Well, basically, yeah, you take that away from us, you're not paying the taxes. We don't owe any taxes. Exactly. We're getting the corporations to pay their damn taxes. They're the ones that owe the taxes." Yeah, because they don't report none of the taxes. They re they don't report none of the taxes on when they take anything from the estate. That's why you yeah. have to enforce the taxes. You have, they, they That's why we them. have to come in and basically then during the audit, the auditors have to balance the books. Exactly. And they will go after those other rogue outfits that are basically out here, uh, the bankers and uh, the, the attorneys and everything else, the courts that have been uh, uh, robbing us uh, out exactly. here, putting false liens and everything else against us. So who do we who do we report to? The CID? Well, basically, when we come in and start claiming, and under that uh, uh, chapter five of that volume uh, one of the statutes at large, one. Uh, we go into uh, this uh, United States Court of International Trade and demand uh, the forfeiture of our financial vessels. They have to clean it up exactly. and give it back to us as the owner. See, only the living can own anything. Uh -huh. And we, we just have people. to prove that we're the living. That's right. The corporate can't. The corporations can't own corporate corporations. That's right. They can't acquire anything. Exactly. Yeah, because because at the end of every year they have to zero their books. 
Exactly. That's right. So they're locking us up. We're dead slaves, as you say. We're, we're they're locking us up for uh, falling in dishonor and not not uh, holding an agreement to being the, the actual heirs of the world and, and carrying out the banker task. Uh, we thought, like you said, we're bankers. Um, we're supposed to be banking. We out here yeah. signing the documents like we know what we're doing. Exactly. So, got, got a, I got a hard work to do. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, be very leery of some of these other deals that some of these people are trying to do, okay? We've got a post office system here that has been operating uh, for well over 200 and some years. We just haven't operated it uh, properly, but it's still the best system going. We don't need to go with diplomatic or UPU mail or any of that other stuff. That okay. UPU is the universal postal system. Right. Okay. okay. It ends in AL also. Okay? So anything that ends in AL, be very leery of it. Judicial, uh, general, uh, uh, now not international, but basically national uh, uh, out here. But we are an American citizen. And we are protected by treaty, and we have two key treaties that we're protected by. One is the Declaration of Independence. The other is the Articles of Confederation. Exactly. They were not a constitution. They were a treaty. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the uh, Constitution was a, uh, a charter to set up a government that we the people stood over. So mm -hmm. we let them slip in the back door because, and we were warned about this numerous times over throughout the Bible over and over again by William Shakespeare in the movie Merchant of Venice. The Jew is the postal system. The Christian was the post system in this country. This was supposed to be a Christian country, not a uh, postal jewelry or Jezebel usury money system. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Patrick, I had I had did some. Uh, uh, I had I had moved a little bit ahead. I had um, I I I, I got to take steps back now that I'm listening to you and I see what you you asked me to set up about the post post office registry and what you you're telling me what to do now. Um, I had put a general delivery. I had made a <laughs> uh, with the estate. I had with the estate. I had made all the mail going general delivery to the estate. And, well, and now I'm looking at it now. No, uh, I shouldn't did anything general, as you saying. Well, basically, yeah, you uh, you can uh, uh, basically just sort of back out of that and uh, try and get back to your. Uh, you need to have a bank. As a banker, you need to have a address that you receive your mail in care of that address. Okay, mm. that great. Okay, that Gravitel or whatever it is, uh, the street address, okay? And basically that's because uh, who's delivering the mail? A bunch of dead people, postal employees. So they're all dead. Yes, they are. Even though I know a couple of them that are alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, uh, but... That's what they treat them as, dead employees. That's why you have a postmaster general, because he's over the dead employees, just 
like when I was in the service. Of course, I was in the Navy, so uh, basically the Admiral uh, was over us. And basically, you were always called by your last name. Hmm. Mm, yep. That's what they call, yep. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's verifiable. Uh, my brother right here, he said he'd been in the service. He said he always call you by your last name. Yep. The last name of the dead person, okay? Not the last name of the living person, because my last name is uh, Patrick. That's my permanent name. See, there's a different meaning for what last really is. Last means permanent. The first name, the chicken came before the egg, okay, scenario. The family came before the little child was ever born. Exactly. Oh, okay, okay, exactly. I understand that. Yeah. See, you've got to have the family first before the little child can be born. Exactly. But in this country, everybody's wanting to be the little child out in front there. Yeah. And when this country was first founded, it was the Cherokee Nation, the Black Hawk Nation, yeah. the Arapaho Nation, the uh, mm-hmm. Sioux Nation, the... Iowa, the Black Black Hawk, uh, all the different uh, nations were here. Yep. Then you went in and found running deer or sleeping elk or uh, wandering fawn or whatever right. her name was. You're right. <laughs> yep, you're right. Yeah. Okay, okay. I have some guys running around here with the feds, and they're, they're uh, claiming to be uh, some type of moors. Moore's descent or something like that. And they're they're um they're 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 doing things sort of like us. Well, as long as they're trying to operate with just uh, uh, currency of exchange, they're welcome mm-hmm. in my world. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. The ones that are uh. The following uh, the Quran over there in uh, uh, the Middle East, those guys that are calling uh, Muhammad, those guys know that basically they are not to use usury. That is so true. Yeah. They're following the true law. We as the Christians, supposedly in this country, are following the wrong law. We really came and became Jews. Jewelry, Jezebels. Gone to the dark side. You're right. Now you can see how the movie Matrix and Star Wars and Star Trek and everything else is coming into play. Trying to tell us some of this stuff. Okay, I probably talked too damn long. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, but it's good for us. <laughs> well, Any more questions? Any more good questions, time. or do you want to wrap it up? Yes? Yeah, one thing I just want to reiterate, this is not about me. This is about getting the proper understanding of how this system in this country is working. And you're right about yeah. that, Patrick. Yeah. Then yeah. when you have that proper understanding, then you will have control. Exactly. And then you can show yeah. other people, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Patrick, once again. Okay. Yes, yeah, Pat. It was a good. This it was a good call tonight. Okay. Hopefully that. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, go over those forms. Look at what I okay. posted up. Those international bills of exchange. And uh, we're gonna run with that. Uh, 
I was sending one into the state and one into the federal, but uh, the problem was uh, uh, they won't get the state one until Wednesday morning. Uh, I think uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, uh, everybody at the state capitol will be taken off for this uh, oh. four or five day Fourth uh, of July weekend. Mm. So nothing out of these. Either one of them will probably be accomplished until maybe next week at the best. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I really liked your document, the uh, flow chart of actions required. So that, I think we, in, in, in connection with Oh, yeah, that, I was supposed to bring that up when we first got on the line. Okay. That everybody right. should sort of go through that and right. uh, uh, sort of uh, question that, uh, mark it up. As you go through, okay, and uh, yeah, we should keep revising it as as you make these changes because the changes really are necessary as you yeah. find out new things. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'll try and get an update rev on that. Okay. Uh, even though a lot of people basically, well, I, I I get tired of all the res you're doing. Oh, uh, they're absolutely necessary. Yeah, uh, yeah necessary. Yeah. That's what you need to study and learn this stuff. Come on with that. Mm -hmm. You got yeah. to got it before. You got to do yeah. it. You got to study. What's the sense of just doing stuff? You don't know what the hell you're doing. and know what stuff is about. You got to be mindful. You got to have knowledge of stuff. So, see, anybody, see if you want to be a banker, you got to act like a banker or a creditor. You got to, like they say, yeah. they, they used to tell me, either you're a debtor or a creditor. If you're a creditor, you got to act like one. If you're a debtor, yeah. you stay like you are. That's what they told me a long time ago. And we we'll, we'll also ought to use the flow chart so when we have add our own notes to it, to give ourselves our own direction so that we know clearly what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Hey, thank you very much, Patrick. Okay. Great. Very we'll enlightening. Catch you, we'll catch you on down the road there. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Have, have, a good, okay. have a good weekend holiday. Okay. Yes. Thank yes. you, everybody. See you guys. Peace and love. Peace and love. Okay. Thank you. Peace and love.